The bottle. Linda and Tommy were getting worried about. Not a big deal. I think it said dad. The bottle. Is he going to be hitting the bottle for inspiration? Oh. Here we go. There was a bottle. Here. And it's now gone. I'm guessing it's upstairs with him. With Dan. Whoa, what is that? That is so cool. Where did that come from? Assembly time, approximately three hours. Required tools, fill up screwdriver, soft-faced hammer, wrench, and X key. That is really cool. Town list. Go to library. Out of books again. Check community board for babysitters. Swing by the wild. New movie playing. Drop by Dr. Walker's. Call ahead. Dr. Walker's. Is that the... the pediatrician? I remember someone mentioned about taking Tommy to a pediatrician. I think it was. My head. Okay. Yeah, he's been drinking. Ooh, can I see? It's not done yet. Hmm. Why Daddy stayed in bed? Grab some ass. Making the stress the stress worse, not better. Hmm. What are you reading? How's my man? Thanks, Dad. Hey, sweetie. I hey, wish I could read that. You? Hmm. Oh god. It's pretty much the same as before. Except now there's a bottle. Oh. I think it's finished? Not sure. It could be finished. Maybe not quite. I don't know if she intends to fill out the tree. She probably does. It's, um... I don't know, it's, it's kind of depressing on the other hand. It does look like the cage is open. So maybe it's also hopeful. Oh! Jesus, sorry. Didn't mean to get in your way. I just realized. A human being just scared a ghost. How often does that happen? Barb, I know I wrote yesterday, but I just... I need your advice. I think Dan's drinking too much. And before you start to worry, let me say he's not an alcoholic. It's just because of the pressure he's under trying to finish the book. But you know Dan's never exactly been a health nut. He isn't gaining weight yet, though even that's just because alcohol kills his appetite. So he's hardly eating at night, which is another problem altogether. I don't think he sees what he's doing to himself, and I don't know how to break through to him about this. Sometimes I just want to say it's not like I have to get drunk to paint, but I know that's not the most mature way to handle it. Sorry for dumping all this on you. I just wanted to get it off my chest. Do you have any advice about how to talk to him? Yours, Linda. See, this is the horrible thing about what I'm doing. I'm choosing the options that stress, that um, try to help his family the most and foregoing helping him write his book. But the thing is, by by not helping him write his book, I'm, I'm hurting him, which is then hurting his family, as you can see. I don't think this is the sort of game that you can win. There's simply choices and consequences. Hangover. Oh, yeah, maybe if I. Yep, there's the bottle. 
Is that the same one as before? America's top small run publisher? Yeah, it's the same one as before. And there's the bottle. Alan. Hey man, this is gonna sound odd, but I could use some advice. I'm in hot water here because, well, I've been drinking more lately. Man, there's just no good way to write that. I mean, I used to drink and write all the time in school. You remember that, right? I guess I got away from it when we got married and definitely after Tommy came along. But he's in bed by 8.30 every night now. And let me be clear, I'm not blacking out or driving drunk. You know I'd never do something like that. I just have a few drinks while I'm working, safe and sound in the house. A writer who drinks isn't exactly unheard of. Well, could I sound more defensive? But here's the hell of it. It's working. It's brought back that college hunger, that energy, and in the last week or two, the book's just singing. I don't even know what I'm asking here. Maybe I just wanted to start the conversation. If you get a chance, give me a call. Dan. Oh God, it's actually working. <sighs> is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I honestly don't know. It's obviously not healthy behavior. And he says he has a drink or two. But I, unless they're really big drinks, I mean, I don't know. He's apparently getting a hungover. So... I'm fine. Have to make sure no one here bullies Tommy. I see you, Shoes. You moved again. Uh. Once again, Tommy, that is not how a car sounds. Right drunk, edit sober. Apparently Hemingway said that. Or maybe someone else did. It doesn't matter, because it's true. To write, you have to be fearless. You have to make choices and plow forward. Surprise the reader. Surprise yourself. Make something that matters, not something safe. What does drinking do? It suppresses inhibitions. Yeah, there are typos, but that's what copy editors are for, and it, it's not like I'm drinking all day. I'm fixing most of the stuff myself each morning. Or early afternoon, I guess. That, well, I'm not stumbling around drunk all day and pissing myself. I'm trying to create something they'll remember me by. No one can imagine how stressful it is unless they've tried it. The pressure's so bad, I just want to give up sometimes. On those nights, a drink is the only way to turn my mind off and get some sleep. When the book is done, I'll dial it back. That's a dangerous mindset to get into, though. When the book is done, I'll dial it back. And what about the next one? And the next one? Just one more week? Just one more month? As soon as you start relying on it, then good luck not doing it. Good luck not drinking when you, anytime you have a problem. Hey, Mommy. With writing. If he uses that Hemingway quote one more time, pretty much every night he's either super focused on his novel or too drunk for us to spend a regular night together. That used to be our time. We would put Tommy down for the night, have a glass of wine, two at the most, and talk about our days or maybe listen to a record. Now I'm lucky to get one night a week where he's sober and not writing. Most nights he has a bourbon, no wait, make that four, and I read in bed until I fall asleep. He tries not to wake me up when he comes in, but you're never as quiet and graceful as you think you are when you're drunk, and in a dark room no less. Of course I want his book to be great, but I also want my husband back. Okay, what else is there? There's more from Dan. I don't think I've been in his room yet, have I? Or his, his office? No, wait, I did. Alan. Hey, man. This is going to sound odd, but I yeah. could use... Okay, there's something else somewhere. I've read this. Barb, I know I wrote yesterday, but I just... Yeah. And that. Oh, here we go. Trash bags, aspirin, salad dressing, beer, case, popcorn, ogburn, and bread.
Well, that sounds like a solid shopping list. <laughs> alcohol, stuff to take away the pain after the alcohol. And some salad dressing and popcorn. And bread. Maybe you can make a salad dressing sandwich. How's it going? Tom? Yum. Okay. Sad in the morning. I think it's all upstairs. Mm hmm. But he promised. If he doesn't do it, I'll help you, honey. Oh. Dan promised to help Tommy build the car, didn't he? But he's just riding and drunk all day. Wait, is that the one downstairs? It must be downstairs. Oh, again. Why don't you stop it, too? Yeah, she can never get him to eat, right? He's not eating properly. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, just a few. Yeah, right. Upstairs? Yeah, it's gotta be upstairs. Just got back from the co-op. What a day. Monica gave me an interesting idea for my ocean piece. The water will stand out more if none of the people on the shore have any blue on their clothes. I'm going to work on that tomorrow. I'll be back here at the house, but just having new ideas and new friends makes working here so much more productive. I'm so glad Dan splurged on this. I can't wait to head back on Wednesday. Awesome. That's really nice to hear. Some good news for once. Let's look out at the night as well. It's completely silent, kind of eerie. I'm faster. Meow. Where are you, Dan? There you are. Having fun? Oh, he's writing in his uh, notebook. Should I have run the ad? I don't know if it would have helped a book, but I still spent all day kicking myself. Did I cop out? Is there some other reason why I didn't want to put the book out there yet? How am I supposed to believe I'm doing something that matters if I'm scared to tell the world about it? Damn it. Way to build your confidence, Dan. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly not confidence building. To not be willing, you know, to say I'm not willing to put... to put money into this. But... There's confidence, and then there's overconfidence. And I think that was overconfidence. You gotta be practical. What are you? That is a strange pose. Are you falling over? Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> you are. Yeah. Alcohol will do that to you. Kind of affects your balance and your motor skills. Oh, 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 oh. Uh. 
for a bourbon and work on the apartment scene. No, Dan, no. Oops. Is Daddy too sad to put together my car? <sighs> Isn't it sad? <laughs> she pretty much just said what I was going to say, except only with a sigh. Isn't it sad how so many people just look outside? Just... Uh, you can just imagine the sort of things that are on their mind. Just... Uh, looking out. Hoping everything's going to work out okay. What a mess. His jogging shoes are right there. He just has to make the effort. Alright, let's do that, and then we'll also do the car. Well, maybe I should do the car first, and then the jogging shoes. I think the order does actually matter. Like, you basically have the most important one, the one you want to put the most effort into, and then the second most important one. I think, I suspect. How's my man? Thanks, Dad. Hey, honey. Hi. How's my man? Thanks, Dad? What? That doesn't seem like a real conversation. <laughs> Thanks for what? Thanks for talking to me? Thank you for acknowledging my existence, Dad. You don't normally, you're usually drunk. Hmm, car first or their marriage? I don't know, I'm thinking I'm thinking Linda. Once again, if their if their marriage is happy, no. they're both better able to help Tommy. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Okay, jogging shoes. Desk of Harold Baxter, January 22nd, 1948. A final entry before I depart. The bank would no doubt prevent me from purchasing the house due to the inherent conflict of interest. But given its history of frequent ownership changes, I feel confident the mortgage department will be glad to have the property off their hands. I believe I can set up a trust, or perhaps a shell company, and convince Mr. Lowry that we must part with the property for less than market value. I feel certain I can appeal to his conservative nature. Well, that is unethical. <laughs> Damn. That is very unethical. And probably illegal? It's gotta be illegal, right? Hmm. I believe it will, pro it will prove to be a shrewd investment as a rental property, and I think I now understand why people do not stay for extended periods. I find myself unable to describe the feeling precisely, but in my time here I found my mind drifting in strange ways, as if it was not always my own. But the natural beauty is undeniable. Perhaps shorter visits are a wiser use of the property. Yes, I believe that is a fine idea indeed. If I ask again, he must be talking about the car. Hmm, is there only the one? Oh no, here's another one. The Diary of Claire Bradford, September 4th, 1961. 
We're here. So why don't I feel more excited? This was supposed to be fun. Just Roger and me. Mom and Dad think we're here with Ben and... L and Lori? But of course, that was just a trick. Nope, just Roger and me in this big house by the ocean for the whole week. I'm sad to say that there's no piano here, but I suppose a week without practice won't do me too much harm. I guess maybe being alone with Roger that long is what's making me feel nervous. Though, why should that be? He's my fiancé, after all. If I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with him, I shouldn't be worried about spending the week with him, should I? Everyone has second thoughts before they get married, right? So it's another couple, or soon-to-be couple. Well, no, they were a couple. They just weren't quite married yet. That stayed here. Hmm. I wonder how I, my ghostly presence, has influenced the past people. All right, well, let's do the car. After talking with Linda, Dan realized how much his habit was hurting the relationship and his health. He started jogging every morning and quickly frown, found that runner's high wasn't a myth. Within a week, he was setting an alarm to get up early so he could run on the beach before breakfast. And while he sometimes missed the raw energy of reckless riding, he would have missed his nights with Linda even more. When Dan still hadn't put the pedal car together, Linda stepped in and began working on it with Tommy. Dan heard them, felt a pang of shame about his regular hangovers, and came down to join in. They completed the project as a family, and although Tommy was hurt that it had taken so long for his father to help, he was happy to finally have his toy. Dan put all of the alcohol back in the kitchen cabinet and promised to stay dry on work days. But he had a hard time focusing while he adjusted to writing sober again. He spent a couple of, a couple of evenings staring at a blank piece of paper, and he never told anyone how hard it was not to sneak down to the kitchen for a drink those first few nights. And that's how the Kaplan's first month at the house on the cliff came to an end. So it's been a month. Paul asked to see some of Dan's progress, and it took Dan two days to work up the courage to call his agent and tell him that there had been none. There wasn't enough of a book to even call it a disaster. It simply wasn't there. Uh-oh. The next day, Dan made good on a promise to take Tommy into the woods and look for arrowheads, though he barely had the time. Tommy could tell his father was disinterested, but once he found an arrowhead, his spirits improved a bit. Dan waited while Tommy explored but didn't join in, and shortly after Tommy found the long arrowhead, they returned home. A few nights later, Dan and Linda got a babysitter and drove into town for a date. Dan surprised Linda by giving her a necklace he'd snuck into town to buy the day before, and Linda surprised him back when she gave him a watch he'd had his eye on. When they got home, they crept upstairs, made sure Tommy was asleep, and they made love like it was their wedding night again. They still had two more months on the coast, and their story was just beginning. The show. Linda got a letter in the mail. The show. Oh, is she going to be showing off her artwork? Oh, that'd be great. Okay, well, things aren't going too bad, actually. I mean, the book is a disaster, but they seem reasonably happy. And there's the car, all assembled. 
and it is beautiful. Alright, well, before I continue, I will be right back. Alright, continuing on. Take a look at this note. Mrs. Kaplan, we're thrilled to be exhibiting your work Thursday. I know this all came together a little last minute, but our secretary is only part-time and she sometimes gets behind. I've sent along some forms and samples for the ad we plan to run in this week's paper. I know it's probably the last thing you want to worry about right now, but what's the point of putting on a show if no one knows about it? Anyhow, I know this is all a bit hectic, but while we might be small, we have a lot of heart, and we're very excited about your show. Nicole Adams, Westlake Gallery. That is great for Linda. That is awesome. Hey, it actually looks happy. Paul called, again. Are you going to call him back? Lynn. Okay, so he's just kind of ignoring Paul. Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen with that. I'm guessing if the book deal hasn't gone through already, or hasn't been shut down already, it's going to be soon. Wish Daddy had helped me find more arrowheads. Has it been five years already? I still remember the thought that blindsided me when I saw Tommy for the first time. He's my new creative work. TJ gave me such a look when I told her I was going to cut back on my painting, but she doesn't have any kids, so there's no way she could understand. It's hard to top creating an entire person. Maybe she thought Dan told me I had to stay home. <laughs> that would have been a very short conversation. Still, I can't ignore the fact that it's time to figure out what on hold means. What would it look like to go back full time? Do I want to? Okay. Well, she's about to get a taste of... I guess what it would be like to be... Painting again full-time. I mean, she's already working part-time, right? I think that's what she said. And her work's about to be displayed in a gallery. And she's working on a new one. Look at that, that one's finished. Even good anymore? Hmm, gotta move faster. <laughs> I think you're a little bit too far behind on your book, Dan. Just a wee bit. Oh, that one looks nice, too. I think that's a turtle. I think. This note, good for one adventure. Signed, Daddy. Oh, yeah, Aw, that's so sweet. Paul. Hey man, if I'd known my letter would set you off like that, I wouldn't have written. My fault. Let's both just calm down. I see now that it was stupid to ask if you knew any art agents. That's like you asking me if I know any professional sculptors. Dumb question, point taken. But believe me, no one's more worried about the schedule than I am. I think about it every day. I can't get away from it. Most nights I start thinking about it and can't stop. My heart starts beating out of control and I have to get up and try to work just to calm down. I'm not slacking off, man. I shouldn't have made you think I was focused on anything else. I'll get everything sorted out. Seriously. Dan. Alright, well, he obviously hasn't given up, which is good, but can he make up the lost time to stay on schedule? I suspect he's really far behind at this point. In arts and entertainment news, the Westlake Gallery has announced a show by visiting artist Linda Kaplan. A resident of Laurenton, Miss Kaplan is visiting the coast with her family and has completely has completed a new series she describes as an expression of restrained emotion using society's imposition on nature as a lens. 
Details of the show will be forthcoming. Local art enthusiasts, enthusiasts will be doubly pleased to learn that the community center will be... And it ends. I wonder how the show's gonna go. Friday, Rap Draft. Saturday, Family Day. Sunday, Dialogue Pass slash Fix Alice. Revisions win. Seems like a pretty solid schedule. It just never stops. Every time I plot something I think will hold together, it falls to pieces. This thing was supposed to be done months ago, but the further I get, the harder it is to make it all work. Nothing's ever as simple as it seems at first. I'll think about a problem for days, finally come up with a fix, and then realize it breaks something somewhere else. I can barely hold all the threads together. Sometimes this thing just feels too big for me and I want to burn it and walk away. But what else would I do? And the deadlines don't help either. I can't think harder or faster. This stuff comes when it comes. And getting stressed out about it just makes it harder to get the words down. Like right now, I'm writing about the thing instead of working on the thing. Damn it, Dan, get to work. Deadlines are no fun at all. Ooh, how nice it is to be those writers. The the very, very few writers who have actually gotten enough success that they don't even have to worry about deadlines. They probably don't even have deadlines. They have enough money that they don't even need to worry about it. They can just take their time, take as much time as they need. That is such a position of luxury that so few have. Alright, there's one more clue for Linda. <laughs> Gotta be on the lookout for those small notes. They can be hidden. Alright, did Hi, that Mom. one, did that Hi, one. Honey. little note. Take to a look at the picture. It's got to be downstairs. I read this. Has it been five years already? <laughs> There's the alcohol. I just realized that looks like a massive blender. That is a very large blender. Ooh, is that it? No, no, I've already read that. Hmm. And that. Big news, Barb. I'm putting on a show. Can you believe it? I've already got butterflies. It's been so long. I'm glad it's a small gallery so I can ease my way back into things a bit. And I want to do it right. I'd forgotten how much work goes into things that aren't painting when it's time to put on a gallery. You know I could never stand all the logistical rigmarole, plus I have a piece I really want to finish before the show. So much to do. I want to take it seriously and go through the whole process though, because if the show goes well, who knows? Hope to hear from you, and hope you can come, of course. Yours always, Linda. Yeah, if it goes well, this could be a great way to get back into it. What is it, Mommy? I don't know yet, honey. <laughs> I wonder what it will be. Clouds? Sky? Looks kind of like a sky at the beginning. Dan and I had a great talk tonight after Tommy went to bed. 
I could tell it was hard for him, but he admitted that his drinking had gotten out of hand. I guess sometimes you just need to hear it from someone else. He even gave jogging a shot, and I think that might have been the biggest wake-up call. He couldn't even get through half a mile without being winded. He's sticking with it, though, and I'm glad we have our nights back again. Right down there. Cool. Can we go? I wonder what he's pointing to. Something on the... On the beach. I think. It's still sad. <sighs> I guess just the... his book. It's not making any progress. <sighs> Haven't had a drink on a weeknight in two weeks. Came up with a new slogan. Write sober. Rewrite sober. Rewrite sober. Hemingway it's not, but it's good to smooth things over with Linda and Tommy a bit. Gotta admit, I don't miss hangovers, but still. I do sometimes miss sitting down with a drink and a crazy idea. Chain myself to the typewriter to make it. Hmm. Dan can take care of the promo forms on the coffee table. Take my bucket to the beach with Daddy. Hmm. I feel like I've been letting... I feel like I've been letting Tommy down a lot. God, I want to satisfy everyone, but you can't. That's kind of the point. You can't. Okay, um... I'm sorry, Dan. Once again, I'm sorry about you and your book, but... I'm gonna go with Tommy first, and then I'm gonna help Linda out a bit. Alright, where's your bucket? There it is. Oh, that's the promo forms. Which is actually exactly what I want to go for. Eh, let's do it. The Diary of Claire Bradford, September 5th, 1961. Maybe getting my thoughts down on paper will help make a list. Oh, will help. Make a list. That's what Mom always taught me. So, dear diary, here are all the wonderful things about Roger. He's very handsome. He'll soon be working as a lawyer at his father's firm. Though the job is no gift, he worked so hard in college. He might be the only person on earth who loves music as much as me. He especially loves the songs I write to him. His family has money, which of course shouldn't matter, but it's nice to feel secure. Who wouldn't want to marry someone like that?
The Diary of Claire Bradford, September 6th, 1961. I don't know why, but I feel like I can really get my thoughts together here. That's why this entry isn't going to be very fun, but fair is fair. I've already waited a day, and there's no use delaying it longer. Here are the not-so-wonderful things about Roger. He can be so self-absorbed, especially when he's working on something. No one will ever accuse him of having a great, a great sense of humor. He's so very predictable. Sometimes this makes me feel secure, other times I just feel so bored. I wonder if maybe he spends too much time chasing his father and not enough being his own man. There, now I feel rotten. I do love him very much. Everyone has their flaws. Are his so bad? <laughs> That's just a glass of water, isn't it? Good job, Dan. I'm proud of you. Dan knew that grown-up problems like deadlines and promo write-ups didn't carry much weight with Tommy. He also knew that there were no conch shells in Oregon, so he ordered one from a catalog with express shipping. It got there in time for Dan to sneak off and bury it on Friday, and the look on Tommy's face when he dug it up made it all worth it. Oh, that's so sweet. Dan couldn't find the time to write Linda's promotional materials from scratch, so he offered to stay up late Saturday night to help her fine-tune the copy. Her take on the ad, heavier on visuals than originally planned, needed only minor wordsmithing, and the late night paid off with an ad they were proud of. Dan missed his deadline. Paul called to chew him out, and even though Tommy and Linda were both upstairs, they could hear the agent's voice over the phone. It just added to the pressure that Dan was putting on himself, and he spent two days in a distracted fog before he got back into any sort of rhythm on his book. Vacation. It was summer. And summer was the time... Home to a stunning display of natural beauty. Oh, how do you pronounce it? Ochaco? Ochaco? National Forest is a perfect destination for hunters, wilderness enthusiasts, and weekend campers alike. One-of-a-kind rock formations providing exci exciting challenges for climbers. The many, uh, the many canyons offer scenic hiking experiences, and the swimming opportunities are many. Located less than five hours from Portland and less than six from the Central Coast, Ochico is perfect for a summer getaway. For more information or to request a brochure, please call the ranger station at... I guess they're going to go on a little trip, or at least they might. How's it coming along? Hmm. A big handprint. Change of scenery. Change of scenery. I'm not even sure what this is. It looks like water and it looks like a sky, but why is there like a gigantic sort of... Is that a handprint? I'm not even sure if that is a handprint. Hmm. Three days in, I'm still trying to figure out where to take the new piece. It's changing as I go, which is always exciting and sort of the point, but this one feels a little aimless. I keep snapping out of a daze and realizing I've been staring out the window for five minutes instead of working. When we first got here, I was excited to have a studio with so many windows and so much natural light. But now it feels almost like a cage. Why be this close to nature but not be, well, in it? Actually, cage isn't the right word. This place is beautiful and there are so many more trees than back home. 
I guess it's more of a reminder when it's right there the whole time, not just an idea or something for the weekend. Anyway, back to the painting. I'm not going to get anything done on it sitting here writing. Hmm. Is Linda having a bit of painter's block? If, is that even a term? I wonder if she's going to struggle in the same way Dan is struggling. Hi, Mom. Hey, honey. Anne, what's latest with you? I hope you're doing better than I am. I'm going a little stir-crazy. Dan loves it here, but he's just riding all day long, so he could be anywhere. I could use a change of scenery. I've walked every trail in the woods and even started a few of my own. It's great getting away from the city, but I wouldn't exactly call this roughing it. Tommy's certainly having a good time exploring the woods. Sometimes we go together, and if I'm in the studio, he knows he can play outside where I can see him, and to stay away from the cliff. Do you remember when we were kids trying to jump the creek in the woods behind the house? I think Tommy's getting into that phase now, climbing trees and all that. Oops, <laughs> I got a little carried away there. You probably don't need to hear about all of our outdoor adventures. Sorry about that. Well, let me know how you're doing. Love, Linda. There's the shell. Daddy! Hey, bud. Another happy picture. That's nice to see. Other stuff to do? Maybe like... Whoa, a lot of notes in here. Yeah, it's the same one. Another happy one. Penny, thanks so much for your letter. It made my day. Tramer's Way came out a while ago now, so I don't get letters like this too often. Writing can be a pretty isolating profession at times, which makes it a big boost to hear that someone out there is getting something from my work. Your support means the world to me. To answer your question, I'm indeed in the midst of writing a new book. I don't have a title or a release date yet, but I'm plugging away on it slowly but surely. I plan to finish it by the end of summer, and I truly hope you enjoy it when it comes out. Thanks again for your kind words. Dan Kaplan. I wonder if that's given him a, a boost of... of newfound energy. Do not fear death so much, but rather the inadequate life. One page at a time. An idea, an idea that is not dangerous is unworthy of being called an idea at all. Jim said, you'd never make it. He said, you're a joke. This is an opportunity, not a burden. You could be working a regular job right now. Hey, Dad. Hey, little guy. I've got to stay on the book. This is my chance to do something people remember, something that matters. If this one isn't good enough, there might not even be a next one. Certainly not one without all sorts of publisher strings attached. This is why we saved up enough to take the summer off. I'm out of excuses. Of course, a long weekend would be fun, but that's also the problem. How do you stay hungry when you've gotten used to weekend getaways? How do you recapture that feeling of being a broke college kid chasing a dream? How do you get back out on that limb again, scared it's going to break, but inching out anyway? Listen to me. Wound up so tight. Maybe taking one night off might help after all. They moved again. Clues for Tommy.
Hmm. Where would it be? Read this, Anne, right? what's the latest with you? Yeah. Ah, there you are. Blast off at Booster Bay. Come enjoy all the excitement at of Booster Bay this weekend. We have a very special discount for all the young astronauts out there. Children under the age of 12 who bring their official Booster Bay Astrojet get free admission to the park. Take a flight to remember on our world-famous rocket coaster. Explore the inner workings of three model spacecraft in our educational city in the sky. Treat yourself to burgers, ice cream, cosmic cotton candy, and more in the food court of the future. There's never been a better time to visit Booster Bay, and you can't beat the price. Burgers, ice cream, and cosmic cotton candy. That sounds delicious. Uh, preferably all of those at the same time. Mmm, cotton candy on... Cotton candy and ice cream. Ooh. I'm going out for a hike. Okay, be safe. Staring out of the window again. We just got back from the show, and I still don't know how I feel about it. The turnout was okay, and I did sell a piece. I learned a long time ago to never complain about selling anything, no matter how small, so that's good, no matter what. But part of me also feels like the glass was half empty. The promo was okay, but I think the abstract layout was a little too weird for the paper. I really should have gone with more text. Then again, it was good of Dan to have helped with that part at all, so who knows how bad it would have been without that. I guess I was most excited to see what kind of feelings the show would bring back up, and it was just too half-hearted to know. Disappointment and excitement in equal parts. I still have some thinking to do. That's a bit disappointing. I guess if that's what I did, if I helped Linda first, Rather than having that as the compromise, it probably would have turned out better. But, then again, now Tommy's really happy. Hmm. Hold on just a second, I'll be right back. Alright, continuing on. Who do I have left? You have found everything in Linda's memory? Mm-hmm. Everything come. Tommy. Oh, Tommy and Dan. Okay. Yeah, it's been good. Just called Paul. Didn't even get a chance to explain before he started in on me. Reamed me out. Absolutely killed me. No point in writing any more than that. Writing everything here instead of working on the book is what screwed me in the first place. Is it? I don't think you've really written in your diary that much. You know, can always be better. How was work? You know, can always be better. Okay, Tommy. Oh, yeah, maybe if I... <laughs> he loves the rockets. Be careful, honey. Oh, sad again. They're all just so sad. I mean, not, not every single one. Some are happy, but... So many of them are sad. They said my rocket makes it free at Booster Bay.
grab some firewood, build a bonfire, and camp on the beach. Hmm. Could go camping. And that's why I brought my camping pack. Okay. Hmm. Let's go, with, let's go with Linda on this one. The Diary of Claire Bradford, September 7th, 1961. I realize now that this isn't about Roger. It's about me. I have to decide who I want to be marrying, uh, who I want to be. Marrying Roger will set so many things in motion. We'll be a well-to-do couple, safe and secure, with wonderful friends and loving families. I may slowly fade into being Roger's wife instead of Claire, but that will be society's doing, not Roger's. He loves me too much to do, th to do that. But what about my music? If I'm accepted at Berkeley, I don't know what we'll do. I can't ask him to quit his job a month after he starts, but what kind of couple lives in separate cities as soon as they get married? The decision can't be this black and white, can it? Position and safety versus a crazier pursuit, alone? Is there a way to have it all? Do I even want it all? Will I ruin everything no matter what I choose? I guess that's kind of... That's kind of mirroring my own decisions, isn't it? Will I ruin everything no matter what I choose? Is there a way to have it all? It looks like there isn't. <laughs> so far, there definitely has not been a way to have it all. There's only so much you can do. There's only so much time. Diary of Claire Bradford, September 8th, 1961. Roger and I talked everything over today, and it was a mistake to speak so soon. I never should have brought any of this up without making up my mind first. Now I've only made things more difficult. I guess I was daydreaming, and he asked me what was on my mind, and before I could help it, it just came out. Although, maybe I wanted to get it off my chest. I told him I wasn't sure it was the right time to get married, and it upset him badly. It didn't matter how many times I told him that I wasn't calling it off, that I just had questions, and that I hadn't made up my mind either way. All he heard was that I didn't love him anymore. Which isn't true at all, but it didn't matter how many times I said that either. He's gone off for a drive, and now I'm here in the house alone. And I think I've made up my mind. I hope he gets back soon so I can tell him. Alright, the compromise. I have, n I have never compromised or done anything to help Dan's book. Ever. I I'm gonna do it this time. Let's grab some firewood. It's, it's time to help him out a bit. He needs some help with the book. Why 
After dinner, Linda showed her family the pictures of Ochako from the brochure she'd ordered. And Dan and Tommy agreed that it was a beautiful spot, even if it wasn't either of their first choices. So they went camping for the weekend, and on Saturday, Linda took the family on a trail she'd found. They hiked to a peaceful river for an afternoon swim, and she felt that all was right with the world. Dan had grown so intrigued by the idea of a night on the beach that he talked Linda and Tommy into taking a day off, the big trip, and still doing the bonfire. He found a new idea for his book that night, and though he still missed days of work, he was much more fun to be around on the ensuing trip. Tommy was so proud of finding the free admission special for Booster Bay that it hurt him even more when they didn't go. He couldn't understand why his parents hadn't taken him when it didn't cost any money. He didn't play with his rocket for a week. Aww. I kind of regret helping Dan out with his book now. Catching up. When Tommy continued to struggle... Hmm. Barb, sorry it's been so long since I've written. Things have been hectic around here, and I'm trying to figure out a way to get things back on track. I don't really want to get into it, but we're getting pulled in a lot of different directions right now. Nothing hurtful, just competing priorities, I guess. Although those can get worse and worse over time. I mean, Dan and I, before we got up here, you know we'd started to drift. <laughs> Look at that. I said I didn't want to get into it, and I did anyway. Enough about me. Please tell me you're doing well, and I hope this doesn't stress you out too much. I promise to write a happier letter soon. Yours always, Linda. Yeah, I really regret focusing on his book now. I'm sorry, Dan, but... <sighs> I think I'm gonna side with the family again. Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan. I want to stress that it's perfectly normal for some children to fall behind in a specific area. Tommy may be struggling with reading comprehension, but his verbal and visual abilities are excellent. That said, he won't catch up on his own. He will need support from both of you. I recommend that you do the attached exercises with Tommy every weekday morning for one to two hours. He'll be unable to focus exclusively on these for two straight hours, so you'll need to take intermittent, intermittent breaks, but use your judgment and stay with it as long as you feel he can stay engaged. I suggest that you do your sessions in the morning, before he tires himself out and becomes distracted. I feel confident that with a supportive environment and dedicated exercise, he will catch up to the other children in his class. Please be in Dutch if you have any questions. Alright, so he needs some he needs some serious help to uh to catch him up. A couple hours every weekday. Hey, Tommy. Can't get it. We can make time. Hey, hon. What you doing? Oh. Looks like she's... I think, I think it's finished. How's it going, Tommy? Hey. Looks like a, a foggy mountain view. Ideas. Weekly outing? Where? Tuesday movie night. Check channel guide or maybe go into town. Family dinner. Too old fashioned? Picnic. Farmer's market. Dan and I had a good conversation today. Well, we'll have to wait and see if it was actually good, but I feel like I got my point across about family time. We've been getting a little frayed on the little things lately, and it reminded me of something Anne said one time. Love is a behavior, not an emotion. If something's important to you, you show it with your actions. We weren't doing so well with that before we got here. I told Dan my idea. I want us all to eat together at 7 every night, with family time after that. Tommy's wiped out by 8.30, so we'd get a solid hour and a half as a family, 
and then Dan and I could have the rest of the night to ourselves. And I think seven's a reasonable request. The rest of the working world knocks off at five, right? It doesn't really matter what we do with the time, just that we spend it together. It's easy to make excuses when you've got a lot going on, which is why patterns help. I hope he feels the same way. Oh, don't worry, I'll make him feel the same way. That is not good. What is that? Is that the, the ticket? The admission ticket? Or uh, whatever it is, it's not good. <sighs> and he's being bullied. if I didn't ever have to sleep. Last night after Linda went to bed, I spent some time, there's that word again, trying to make everything fit. I even drew up a little chart. The math is simple. It doesn't work. Technically, I could still get in eight hours, assuming I don't eat or need to do anything that's not writing. But what about letters, reading, dealing with Paul? Hell, what about doing the dishes or taking out the trash? Not to mention that knocking off for the day isn't like flipping off a switch. It takes time to crawl out of my head and start functioning like a normal person again. And I can't just split it up into smaller chunks. Sometimes it takes an hour of false starts just to get going on anything usable. And stopping just sends the whole process right back to square one. Something's got to give. There just isn't enough time. Hmm. Well, I'm afraid what I'm going to convince him to give is going to be the book. It's, it's got to be the book. Lonnie learns letters. Age 4 to 6. 12 chapters of reading comprehension exercises. That is for Tommy. Alright, so there's more for Dan. Perfect schedule. A.K.A. the single un... Unattached Writer's Guide. <laughs> 10 to 2, write. 2 to 3, eat plus step away. 3 to 7, write. 7 to 8, eat. 7 to 10, decompress plus edit plus life. Wrenches. Tommy's till 11. Knock off at 7. Hmm. Did I say Tommy's till 11? I meant to say Tommy till 11. I'm guessing this is the schedule he would have to do if he wants to actually catch up with his writing to get back on schedule. Alan, this letter might come from out of the blue, but do you remember when you told me about Bobby falling behind on reading? Looks like we're there with Tommy. We knew he was struggling when we came up here, but his teacher gave us a list of books for him to work on over the break and said we should see how he responded to the change in environment. She gave us a few sample readings and told us to keep an eye on how he was grasping the concepts. Tommy still isn't there, and long story short, the pediatrician in town knows a specialist who gave us some exercises to try. They seem pretty straightforward, but I wanted to write and see if you had any tips that helped you guys with Bobby. Damn. Just realized I didn't even ask how you've been. I'm sorry. This stuff is just a lot to think about. Damn. Honey, listen to me. You are smart. Will it make me smarter? I guess he feels inadequate. Doesn't have a lot of self-confidence.
Oh, again. <laughs> In his memories, what he's drawing is always just so sad. We barely talked yesterday. Wow, you're right. I guess we've just been so busy. We've been back from camping for three days and I'm still buzzing. Before we left, I did some research and found two great hikes, and I put together enough food for us to cook every meal with a real fire instead of having to worry about hiking back to the car or going into Primeville for supplies. It was just what I needed. Sleeping under the stars, swimming in the lake, exploring new trails, even drinking a few beers by the campfire. Not a soul around but us. Well, she seems to actually be doing okay. That's nice. And then... I'm sorry. I shouldn't have snapped. I just... Whoa! I'm sorry. I shouldn't have snapped. I just... Yeah, he's got a little bit too much... What the... <laughs> there also appears to be two chairs that he's sitting on. But anyway. Yeah. Something's gotta give. And it's gonna be the book. Just got back from the trip. Or trips, I should say. Once I got it in my head that a night on the beach would be good for the stress, I was able to talk Linda and Tommy into knocking a day off the big trip to do the bonfire anyway. It turned out to be a good idea. Spending the evening on the beach reminded me of a church retreat we did back in seventh grade. The smell of the bonfire gave me such a strong memory of a crush I had on Jenny something. Or was it Jennifer? I can't remember. But I do remember those flushed schoolboy emotions. I think I can use those for the scene at the dance. Well, I still don't think my idea of doing the bonfire was a good idea, but at least it helped him. New rule. Don't disturb me if the door to my office is closed. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, but... <clears throat> there was some way to... That would, that would be very, very bad. I understand why he wants that, but... That is just going to shut Linda out so much. Man said to do the Lonnie book every morning. Hmm. Apparently, should have dinner around the table every night. Alright, do I. Do I go Tommy first and then Linda or Linda and then Tommy? Which, which one do I need more? That's, that's really, really hard. The sounds work in my head. I think I'm gonna go with Tommy. He's really struggling. Hi, Dad. Hey, Tommy. Yeah. Diary of K. Williams. 
Why is there no full name? May 8th, 1952. Jay is gone and I am alone. That is the sum of it. No other thought enters my mind. Wed 38 years, now alone. A senseless accident has taken Jay from me. What I should do with myself, I do not know. Money is no worry. Time. Time, that is the thing. There's so much of it still ahead of me. I've been blessed with health, but that blessing is now a curse. It is nothing more than the curse of time alone, without... Jay. Why is the rest of the name not filled out? I attempt to look ahead, but cannot envision a path without Jay. For so long, I had no need to imagine one. The children do not understand why I have come to this house alone, as they cannot understand my loss. Diary of K. Williams, May 12th, 1952. I cannot say that I feel better than I did upon arriving, for Jay is still gone. But I do feel a change. Some glimmer of a path is taking form in my mind. I cannot describe it other than a narrowing of thought. Perhaps time alone is to be thanked, or perhaps it is something else, something unknown. Today I drove to McClendon's to buy coffee, wine and vegetables, although I was not due to run short of these for a few days more. I confess I went to hear human voices, to be around the living. I conversed with a pleasant couple, and it did be no small measure of good. My first words came out as a croak, and I realized I had not spoken in days. A small reminder of my solitary days here, alone with my thoughts, thinking of Jay, staring at the sea just over the cliff. Though I must confess that my gaze always drifts from the sea to the edge of the cliff. Oh. Is that who I am? So there, there's an accident. On the cliff. A senseless accident. Jesus. But wait, what about the dates? How does that match up with... Uh, I'm trying to remember when the letters from that investigator were. They're, they were in the 50s, weren't they? The 1950s? Hmm. Laugh at me. Okay. Um, family should have dinner around the table every night. Let's do that. Dan didn't want Tommy to start another school year behind, so he committed to helping the little man for two hours every morning. Having both of his parents there helped Tommy's confidence as much as his reading, and their morning practices became an event they all looked forward to. Yes! Okay, he needed that. He really did. Dan couldn't find time to knock off completely at seven every night, but he agreed to have dinner at the table each night before heading back to work. Linda and Tommy missed him after dinner, with the sound of his typewriter the only sign he was even in the house. But they were glad for the time they did get at the table.
Dan could figure out a way to please everyone and still make room for the time and focus he needed to write. He was able to compromise and fit in one unbroken session each day. But for the rest of the day, he worked around his family commitments and tried to make the most of the shorter sessions. The lack of focus came through in his work. As July came to an end, the Kaplan's lives had developed a pattern. Dan had finished his first draft, and he knew it was awful. With only a month left, Paul couldn't fight off Grove Field, and Dan had no choice but to send the draft to his publisher. The next day, Paul called to tell Dan that Grove Field was threatening to withhold Dan's completion payment. It was a nightmare. That is not good. On Friday, Dan and Linda both knocked off early, took Tommy to his aunt's house, and drove to a bed and breakfast. They barely left their room. The guests in the room below complained about the noise, but the owner, who assumed that Dan and Linda were on their honeymoon, offered to move the guests to a different room instead. <laughs> and on the following Tuesday, Tommy put on an art show in the den, explaining his drawings to his parents one by one. Dan got Linda to pretend they were at an art auction, bidding against one another, one another for each drawing. Dan would not be denied, outbidding Linda every time while complimenting the family's youngest artist on his priceless works of art. They still had a month left, but Dan's chances, chances to change the course of the summer were growing fewer. Yep. I'm sorry, Dan, but I'm afraid your book is... probably not going to be a bestseller. Full House. A friend of Dan's was coming to visit... Hmm. A visitor. 